Shout this morning to get one in your church. Yeah, I knew him, and all my love 
so you know, we are, uh, our deacons aren't snooping around your vehicles. <laughs> we, we have to count uh, park passes and stuff uh, to pay for uh, you guys today. So uh, know that that's free, and uh, we're thankful to the park for letting us do this. Uh, and, uh, walking too much as a child, right? <laughs> um, all right, well, hey, uh, I, I uh, was trying to figure out what to talk about this morning, and uh, we ran across this week, if you're not familiar with them, uh, Renew.org is a really cool organization that uh, is uh, really trying to bring revival back, um, and uh, to go back to the Bible, and to, to back to uh, just what we, we really need to be thinking about. And uh, so uh, one of the guys, uh, Daniel McCoy, Janet is a professor this last summer, uh, wrote a timeline uh, of the week leading up to uh, uh, Easter Sunday. And so I thought it was really good, and I thought I would just share it with you today, because it's a lot better than what I could write. Um, but I want to ask you, how was your week? Good. Did you have a good week? Yeah. Terry is here. Terry, Terry uh, had gallbladder surgery this week. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Terry. Yeah. Do we have an ambulance on the <laughs> uh, But sometimes, uh, man, our weeks are really weird sometimes, right? The beginning of our week was strange, right? My parents were actually uh, gone and we were feeding their livestock. And, like, you know, how's it going? I'm like, well, we got the horses in the barn before the hail. And like the two inches of rain and then the blizzard for 24 hours and a tornado, uh, right? So that was an interesting start to all of our weeks. Uh, but leading up to the week uh, that, that Easter happened, man, there was a lot that went on. And uh, just before that week, uh, and by the way, this is this is the best week in the history of the world. Amen. Because of what happened. And because of the new covenant that happened uh, for us uh, through Jesus Christ. Leading up to that week, uh, Jesus had performed many miracles, right? He had all of his disciples with him. He went around teaching. Uh, he, uh, right beforehand, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And that was uh, the, the, the seventh sign, right? He, he did that. And then he went, uh, it, had, it was anointing of Bethany, right? Uh, the woman anointed his, his feet, right? And so... Um, he comes in on Sunday. We, we, we uh, celebrated that last Sunday for Palm Sunday, right? Um, then he rode in on a donkey and huge crowds gathered. And people were uh, putting down their coats and putting down palm leaves as he rode into town, right? And right before that, he, he looks over to Jerusalem, right? And, uh, you know, he knows what's going to happen. And he cries over him a little bit. He rides in on a donkey, just as uh, it was prophesied, right, in the Old Testament. All this had to happen. The disciples uh, had likely never been more excited, right? They were thinking, hey, we're going we're gonna to be something, right? They thought, they thought the second coming of Christ was actually the first coming, right? They thought that, hey, we're going we're gonna to beat the Romans, we're going we're gonna to have an earthly kingdom. And they were wrong. Thankfully, they were wrong. Because what he did was so much better. get my fingers to work. I said this is the first time I've ever worn long johns and slacks. By the way. <laughs> on Monday, Jesus cursed the fig tree on the way in. I think this is really interesting because uh, of the conversations that he had with, the, with people, with the religious leaders at the time. Because he basically was saying from the very beginning that in this kingdom that's going to come, you better you better uh, bear fruit. He cursed the fig tree. He went into the temple in Jerusalem. He began to overturn tables where they were they were uh, selling things. Right? They had turned his temple into a marketplace. He had a Monday, right? And the people around him had a Monday. But he said, you know what? Um, this temple is going to be a temple of prayer, right? It's a house of prayer. It's not a den of robbers. Okay? They commercialized their faith. Monday was a, was a, it was, it was difficult to see a connection between uh, Jesus' actions on Monday and the religious leader's response Thursday and Friday, right? They, they were not happy. 
Okay. This was this was their kingdom. And they had forgotten who that it was God's kingdom. And Jesus reminded them of that. On Tuesday, they entered the city again and noticed the fig tree that had been cursed was now withered. You can read that in Mark 11. Jesus takes that day and teaches all around the temple. Unsurprisingly, he's met with hostile questions, such as, by what authority are you doing these things? And uh, should we pay taxes to Caesar? People were trying to trap him, right? He showed himself unfazed by their questioning. Uh, as he out debated the scholars. Go back and read all those. It's really cool. Okay? They asked him a lot of questions. And he had perfect answers to him. I always wish I could see the disciples' faces with like, oh man, they got you again. Right? <laughs> uh, but he called people to repentance that day. And he talked to them about the imminent judgment coming, right? He, all these parables happened during on, on Tuesday and maybe Wednesday. The parable of the two sons, the wicked tenants, the king and the son. He talked to the Sadducees, and remember the greatest commandment, he told them that uh, on this day. Uh, the parable of the ten virgins, the ten talents, he talked to them about unbelief, about the signs to come and the judgment. He went up to the Mount of Olives. Um, Jesus described this coming destruction of Jerusalem, right? And also, and Dick talked about that in Matthew. Uh, the religious leaders' minds, they had sealed his faith, right? He must die. They schemed against him. And, and maybe for a couple different reasons. I'm not going to debate this today because it's too cold, but uh, as I read as I read John, there are some religious leaders that wanted him dead because they thought that he was a uh, blasphemy. But there are also other religious leaders that thought he may be the Christ. And he needed to die so that they could still be in charge and the kingdom could still the, the, the kingdom could still be going. And so you have to think about that. <laughs> um, that's really sad. And sometimes we do that today. Sometimes we're still we're still killing Jesus for our own means. <laughs> Remember uh, this time, uh, also, they say this is possibly a time when the anointing happened and that uh, Judas decided this was time to go talk to the religious leaders um, about uh, selling Jesus out. Wednesday, said not much happened Wednesday. I told Nate this week, maybe they had a wanna Wednesday, so they took a break. Uh, and, and everybody was working at a wanna. So. Uh, but also, you know, I, I, I almost wonder too during this day. He spent time, just probably spent time with his disciples. You wonder about that Thursday, he, he gets into just washing their feet. But you wonder at the beginning of the week where he curses the fig tree. And then he spends time with his disciples. And it's good to spend a good time with your people. It's good to spend time with uh, those that are around you. Uh, my, my, my youngest son, sometimes, like maybe two, two Wednesdays a month, uh, I get to stay home, uh, and uh, he, he tells me, he goes, I want to stay home with you and eat pizza, so that's what we do, right? Um, so we did that last Wednesday, and I kind of I kind of thought about that. I'm like, maybe maybe the disciples of Jesus, they just want to take some time together and uh, stay home and eat pizza. It could be a translation, Lindsay. So spending time together is important. And Jesus spent time with his with people. And he spent time with his disciples. Thursday. Thursdays, uh, whenever uh, the feast in the upper room happens, right? Jesus washes his disciples' feet. He knows he's going to the cross. And he knows that everybody's going to run away. And he knows that he's going to be betrayed by Judas. But he washes his feet anyway. He serves, and he shows us what serving means. commands us to love one another. Toward the end of the meal, he takes the elements of the Passover feast and applies them to the new covenant in his blood. Remember, when he came into town, he called the temple his father's temple. And then he said, it's his temple. And now he says, it's going to be yours. 
because of the new covenant. He, bring, he broke the bread. He said, take my body. He said, take the wine. This is my blood covenant, which is poured out over men. He gives his disciples an ordinance. And this is the Lord's Supper, communion. And we'll be doing that. And then this prayer is going to give a meditation of that. It's Thanksgiving. That evening, he continued to, to uh, teach, and he promised his disciples the Holy Spirit. Man, if you want to go and read something incredible, read John 14 through 17. That's what he promises the Holy Spirit. He promises he's going to take care of everyone. And his prayer in John 17 is an awesome prayer. It's actually what I would call the Lord's Prayer. Because it's God talking to his Father, or Jesus talking to his Father. It's an incredible conversation. That night he went up to the Mount of Olives, right? He went to pray. He went to pray to, to ask God if there's any way to save humanity, other, any other way to save humanity. If he would have to go, not go through, but he went through a part of the answer is no. And Jesus replied, your will be done, not mine. He sweat blood, right, for us. Because he knew it wasn't, it wasn't the physical hurt on the cross. It was that he took the sin for everybody, the past, present, future, upon himself, so that we could be saved. Could you imagine the excruciating pain of that? <clears throat> I was able to, uh, I, for those of you that were, uh, came in and did the prayer walk, uh, man, what an awesome thing, right? I appreciate Justin doing that. And uh, I helped, what came to help clean up. And uh, I wasn't snooping, but as uh, somebody that works at our church and wanted to know, man, what's going on with, with everybody? As I was throwing all the hearts and the, the, uh, the crosses away, I read some of the things that we're dealing with. There's a lot of hurt. There's a, there's a lot of things that we're dealing with in this life. And you know what would be really sad is if we had to hold on to those things. Uh, and that Jesus didn't take our burden away from us. And give us hope. And so, man, I, I just got to thinking about that. And I was really sober in thought. So I remember that he, he prayed. And then all of a sudden, that there was men that came. Led by Judas Iscariot. And the religious leaders come arrest him. Right? There was a sword. And they cut off an ear. Right? By Peter. And then Jesus healed him. They seized him and took him to the temple, and took him to, Jerusalem, to the temple. And there was a late night uh, trial that happened at the uh, the house of uh, Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was a high priest. And then there was a trial at Caiaphas's house, and Jesus convicted of blasphemy. Right? They claimed that he he claimed to be equal with God. He said, "I am." Right? And that he tells Peter that he's going to deny him. Right? At the last supper, and he does three times. And Peter leaves weeping bitterly. Sometimes we're Peter. Good Friday. We just celebrated that on Friday. Early in the morning, he's brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor in Judea. He sees no reason to put him to death. When he hears that Jesus uh, is a Galilean, he sends him uh, to, uh, to Herod. And Herod sends him back. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it. But since he, he was told that he was inciting a riot, and the Jewish leaders won't leave it alone, he decides to give them a choice, right? He have a choice in him and Barabbas. And they choose Barabbas. This happens early in the morning, right? I don't think everybody was present. They had a quick trial. But Jesus didn't say much because he knew that his time had come. Judas Iscariot feels awful, right? He knows that he betrayed the Christ and he hangs himself. Jesus on the cross from approximately 9 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. He shouts, it is finished! In John 19.30. He looks up to heaven and says, Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. He breathed his last and an earthquake occurs. Do you know this? This is actually recorded in other historical events beyond Christian history. 
that there was an earthquake that occurred during the time. And in the temple, the, uh, the curtain was torn from top to bottom. And there was actually darkness that fell over the entire world at the time. There's reports from Greece at the time that, 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 that the darkness fell. They didn't know why. Until years later, they understood why. So this isn't just a Christian story that's made up. This happened. Do you remember that some churches today and some people today want to tell you the resurrection didn't happen? I'm going to tell you that it did. And if you look into it, man, there's so much more to it. He's buried in a tomb. He's, he's taken down and he's buried in a tomb from Joseph of Arimathea. And the tomb, tomb is sealed. Saturday is a sad day. Can you imagine? The sadness, the confusion between the people that thought that they were going to rule an earthly kingdom. They celebrated the Sabbath. And so did Jesus. You've had sad and frustrating days, right? You've had sad and frustrating weeks. They don't last forever. Because Sunday comes. On Sunday... Man, what a great day. Jesus defeated death. And he defeated sin. And he defeated Satan. We still have to deal with all those things in this world. But guess what? We have hope in Jesus Christ with the new covenant. On this day, that's why we celebrate. He suffered for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. Isaiah 53. And the angel said to the woman, they come to the tomb, and he's not here, right? He's not here. As we went through the little eggs last night with our family, with the, the different uh, uh, things that happened that week, right? And we get to the end, you know, with the one that has nothing in it. I actually thought last night, there's not nothing in it. There's the Holy Spirit. Right? Because because we thought, those, back then they thought, hey, that's it, right? But guess what? Jesus had kind of more for us. He didn't want to just save the Jewish people. He wanted to save everybody. That's what's incredible about it. So, uh, in closing, I'm going to give you this little acronym. Because Nate told me I had to. I'm not an acronym fan. But it's really good. <clears throat> Remember for Easter... The E, Jesus' resurrection means his execution wasn't the end. A, Jesus' resurrection means there's an afterlife. S, Jesus' resurrection means he was successful in saving us from our sins. Try saying that seven times fast. T, Jesus' resurrection means he was telling the truth. E, Jesus' resurrection means he ended the reign of of our enemies. R. Jesus' resurrection means he has begun restoring all reality. That last one. Think about that. What a great day to celebrate. Perfect. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for you. We're so thankful that we get to be called your children. Because of what Jesus did on the cross and his raising this day that we celebrate. And let us remember that in the weeks we have, we have weeks that we think will never end. We have days that we feel that uh, we just can't go on. That there's, there's victory in you and hope in you because of your sacrifice. And that's why we celebrate. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. One from early in Christ's ministry, Mark chapter 1, and another one from uh, the Last Supper. <clears throat> now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. From Mark 16. 
While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Throughout my life, I was told uh, from various places that if I believe in God, I'll experience heaven when I die. It wasn't until I read uh, Dallas Willard's book, The Divine Conspiracy, that I understood what Jesus is saying in these verses. Pull this up just a second. Early in his ministry, Jesus tells the audience of Jewish neighbors, repent and believe. Believe in the good news, because the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. It's very close. It's right next to us. It's not here yet, but it's really close. At the end of the earthly ministry, he said to his disciples, I've looked forward to this ritual Passover meal, because the next time I partake it, we'll be, we'll be in God's kingdom. Jesus uses the terms kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God interchangeably in a total of more than a hundred times in the Gospels. When Christ is resurrected, we no longer have to wait to experience the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where God's will is being lived out. When we die, we will experience a new heaven and a new earth, one without sin, without heartache, without death. But in those moments when we are doing what God would have us do here in this life, we are experiencing God's kingdom. We don't have to wait to experience it. In God's kingdom, there is forgiveness of sins. You've been forgiven of your sins if you've placed your faith in Christ. In God's kingdom, the poor are taken care of and the hungry are fed. In God's kingdom, we are living the life he wants, free from sin. In God's kingdom, the humble are exalted and the proud are laid low. In his kingdom, we are humble like children. In God's kingdom, demons are driven out. We'll be surprised who is eating at the table in God's kingdom and who is not. Those who are too proud to attend will not be there, but the humble and the outcast will be at the table. How do we get into God's kingdom? Three things. First, we acknowledge our sin. That's what it means to repent. We, re we acknowledge our sin and turn from it. You can't be in the kingdom and sin at the same time. Be baptized with water and the Spirit, he told Nicodemus, to be in God's kingdom. And then we do God's will. I think of God's kingdom as uh, kind of like those weather maps where it tells you the temperature. And right now, this place is blue on that weather map, right? And where it's a little bit warmer south of us, it's green, you know. And, and my friend celebrating Easter at Carfu Haiti to now is probably uh, red, right? Probably 80 degrees there right now. And uh, uh, there's a little bubble around this place because we're doing God's will right now. And it's a little color on that map that says, right, that this is the will of God. And it's also when you feed the hungry. And it's also when you uh, love on the poor. And it's also when uh, we gather together and pray for each other and help each other with our hurts. We celebrate the victory in Jesus that we remember, not just the sacrifice of Christ, but the prize to be forgiven of our sin and what we are doing his will to be uh, to experience his kingdom now and in the next life. Let's pray. Lord, we pray your kingdom come in our personal walk as we repent of our personal sins and in our corporate walk as we as a church try to do your will as a church and in a worldwide sense that all would know and live out your will. We thank you that in the new heaven and earth we will not have to fight out our sinful nature nor the curse set upon the world, but in the meantime, may your Holy Spirit lead us to right living and right action. Amen.
surprised we finished communion in time. I do want to apologize. I, I may run out. <laughs> um, and that's my fault. Uh, so, but I, uh, I'm just thankful for all you today. And uh, spend time today with the Lord. Spend time today in reflection. Spend time today with each other. And uh, whether you, you go, to, go to church today, uh, wherever it is you go to church at, you go to church uh, at Christian Church, we have seven rolls at 945. So we'd love to have you at both services. And uh, Nate, do you have anything you want to add? We have peace. You have peace. <laughs> 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 it's okay. You can't feel like people are in the body. Well, let's, uh, let's pray. We'll, uh, we'll get you. Heavenly Father, we're thankful. We're thankful for uh, for our community, uh, not just this one, but of believers. And uh, Lord, we just we're thankful uh, uh, for the, the, the time of celebration today. And uh, Lord, in a world uh, that would like to get rid of you and uh, do their own thing, Lord, uh, whatever happens in this world, we know that you're on the throne. And today is a day that we absolutely celebrate that. We ask for safe travels back to town and just a wonderful, wonderful day uh, together with you. We ask this in Jesus' name.